All right, welcome back to another episode of the Second Opinion Loan Officer podcast. And today, this is actually pretty exciting for me. I have been watching this young lady. For me, she's a young lady. She may not, she may argue that she's been around for a lot longer than that she seems like she has been. But Rebecca Foote has been doing really cool stuff with content. And I talk a lot about content marketing and how important content marketing is. And the way that I frame content marketing is this essentially, is we as loan originators, as mortgage professionals, as real estate professionals, or actually as anybody, we make money, we earn, we run our business is powered by having conversations about qualifying for a mortgage. And when we have conversations with people one-on-one, -on -one, we're helping people when it's convenient for us. But when that conversation, when you take that conversation and you turn it into content, that's when you document it and you put it in different places. And then content is just a conversation that's convenient for the consumer so that they can engage with you, learn about you, learn what you do on their timeline. And Rebecca has, has really been just killing it. Like I've been paying attention to her for about six or seven months and she's just been doing such an amazing job with all different types of content creations. So let's get Rebecca in here and welcome to my little thing here. Thank you so much for kind of coming. I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Oh, thank you so much, Scott. I am a big fan. I watch every episode. So I appreciate what you do for our industry and getting out there with all sorts of information. No, cool. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough market. And were you, how long you've been in the industry? We opened the doors to our own business in 2006. So perfect timing, right? Okay. So, okay. So you recognize the opportunities that come out of a, out of, out of a chaotic, out of a chaotic time. Do, do you think that, do you think that starting your business during that time has helped pr prepare you and for your mindset and looking for the opportunities and kind of the, the, the effort that you needed to put into being successful in this market? A little bit. We never did a the lot of subprime business. So that aspect didn't really hurt us. And when everybody was hiding that housing crashes and stuff, we were growing every year because we only had one way to go. We just opened. That's so true. Yeah. So we just kept plugging away. And you know, if you, I always said, if you treat your customers right and you didn't fudge the numbers and stuff, they would come back. And here we are 17 years later, still doing the same thing. Man. Okay, so let's talk about that journey a little bit. I I started seeing you when you started doing a lot of on your YouTube channel and started doing a lot of videos like that, but you do a lot more than that. Kind of tell me a little bit about your media empire that you've created essentially or your content empire. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing in your business and why. I am a huge fan of education. I always have been. And over the years, I just have implemented more and more. So one adjective people use to describe me is that I'm an implementer because I, I learn about something. If it's something I think I can handle and whether it's time in my business to do it, time to create it, then I implement it and we just keep going with that. So I started doing lunch and learns for real estate agents back in 2017 and they were going, I added in first time home buyer seminars at that point in person, I would actually get people from 10 to 20 people at a seminar every month it was going really well. And then COVID hit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the homebuyer seminars have been hard to bring back. I, I've gone to a webinar version because I can't seem to get people to come back out. I think people just got very used to being online. Yeah. But I did bring the lunch and learns back out in 21. And those have been going well still. But you your lunch and learns? Yes. So I there are four real estate agents, but even if it's like an attorney or a financial planner or something, they are more than welcome to come if they feel the content works for them. For well, example, walk me through that a little bit because I did it, I I'm just I'm laughing here on the inside because I did the exact same thing when I originated. I, I love doing in-person first-time home buyer seminars, did a lot of those. 
and then it's agent lunch and learns was my second favorite. And, and I did a lot of those and I really enjoyed it. So talk me through that a little bit. Are, are you mostly reaching out to agents that already know you? How do you advertise your classes and what kind of topics do you cover in your lunch and learns? Sure. So I send out a weekly email to real estate agents through my CRM every Monday. So it has a brief market update and then it usually has a YouTube video of the week and then it has all of our upcoming events. So I invite every real estate agent that's in my database every week. They're getting at least one email for it. They are CP on my website and I also post it on social media, of course, with static posts and reels and TikToks and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But, and then obviously you got to pick up the phone sometimes, right? You can't be afraid yeah. to call them. How did you build a real estate? How did you build the real estate agent list? Are these people that you know personally? Did you buy lists? Did you, how, do you, how have you built that list? Both my husband and I went to school with two owners of what is now a local KW office. We went to different districts. So we both had them to get started and then we do a, a deal and you get to know that listing agent. So now that listing yeah. agent gets on my list and I just build it over time. I uh -huh. never bought a list, uh, but so if, very if, organically. Yes. And, but it doesn't mean if there's not a new agent that comes into a brokerage, I'll add them to the list, even though I don't know them. And yeah, but I, what I found, if you're putting out good content, that's quick. They don't want to read a big blog and an email every week they i'm starting now to get referrals from agents i've never talked to and that's the best thing so then i'm like who's that <laughs> where, where do you think that's coming from is that did they attend your lunch and learns or are they just seeing you everywhere because you basically are i think they're seeing me everywhere they know i have a heart to educate and do what's in the best interest of the buyer and they feel comfortable saying them over See, I, I love that you say that. I, I had a friend of mine on the podcast a few weeks ago, and we talked about servant leadership. And, and I think the title of that topic was, yeah, they say sales is a numbers game, but what happens if the math doesn't work anymore? And really what we were talking about is this, like you have, you have this passion to help people, to educate people. Like your goal is for you would love to get business out of an interaction with somebody. And I find this with a lot of content creators. I think it's a self creating content is a selfless activity because you're just putting value out into the world and you don't know, you don't have any expectations. You have hopes that you have something, but you don't have any expectations of, of getting something in return because you don't know who's going to see it or when or what their situation is. And when we publish content, people, again, they find it on their timeline. They find it when they have a need, they do search or on social, if they're surfing on social or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the way that, I love the way that you phrase that. And I hope what people are getting out of this conversation is they're really understanding your heart and what, what drives you is just helping people and educating people. That's what I've said this for years. It's like, I'm a horrible salesperson, but I love to educate. I just, I love to help people. I love to educate. I don't always know what's going to come out of it, but I love to share. And, and by doing that, I get to meet people like you that also like-minded individuals. So do you find that by sharing your content, it attracts the type of business partners that you want to do business with? Because your character, your personality resonates with them in some way? Typically, yes. Yes. There's always a few that will sure. take your information and never use you. And that's okay. That's okay. I, as, I, as long as we're helping people out there, I want them to, I, I believe that not everybody should buy a house today. You need to be in the right financial state to do that. And I will help get you there, whether it's restructuring your student loans or Let's pay this off so we can qualify or up the credit or whatever it is. I want to help people do what's in their best financial issue going forward and put them in a better financial spot. That's always been our motto since the day we opened our doors. I love that. Let's get back to the lunch and learns and then the first time homebuyer webinars. What topics are you, what kind of classes? Because how often do you do them? I do the agent lunch and learns monthly and I do the homebuyer webinar monthly as well. 
Okay, so that doesn't sound like a lot, but I've done them monthly or biweekly. Like, how do you come up with topics? What topics do you come up with? And and what's been the most popular one of recently? Last month, I did a Canva 1.0 because so many agents don't know how to even log in. So we yeah. logged in, we talked very basic stuff. There, I'm probably going to do a Canva 2.0 coming up. Um, I, September is realtor safety month. So I'm actually bringing in the local sheriff's department and they're going to talk about our concealed carry laws, how to deescalate situations. And, uh, that, that was, I did that four or five years ago and I had a good turnout. So we thought it was time to, to repeat it. I, I generally don't repeat topics too much. If it's been a while, we had appraisers come in and talk about what they're looking for in houses. I had 50 agents show up to that one to wow. hear, just talk to a real estate appraiser, which kind of boggled my mind. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. But you okay. got to think outside the box. I've done business planning and vision boards and stuff like that. They didn't get as good of turnouts. It's more, we did chat GPT one this year that had a good turnout. I brought in a uh, rescore your life to talk about credit counseling. That was a good turnout. So some I teach and some I bring in an expert if I don't know the topic. I love that. I, I actually, I attended, I attended an in-person lunch and learn one time. The FBI will come out and teach about fraud, mm. like about consumer fraud and financial fraud and things like that. And that had a really big turnout, I bet. And, but they're, they're willing. I love the having the sheriff come out and having different guests come out. That's really cool. Yeah. So the, these are online now or are these in person? So they're in person once in a while, summer months, sometimes I'll do some of them online. Okay. And it depends like the chat GPT. I had my friend, Jason Frazier, who I know. You yeah. Know. Yeah. So he did that one for me. So that was a webinar, but we had 30 agents on live and then it's on my YouTube channel now for, I actually have two YouTube channels. So that's, <laughs> second part of this, but yeah, um, I have one just for agents and then I have one for the public. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> uh, how long have you had each of these channels? I've been on YouTube for about two years to the public and probably 18 months, a second channel for agents. And okay. what happened was I went to a conference and they had a realtor panel, which was good because it was a realtor and lender conference. And I realized some of these seasoned real estate agents don't want to admit to you that they don't know what a VA loan is. They're not going to come to a lunch and learn on it, but they will watch a video at home wow. where I don't have to know that they watched it. Okay. So we came back and I'm like, I can do this. So we just started doing what's a VA loan, how does seller's assistance work, the basic kind of stuff. But I also have stuff on there like Canva 1.0. Here's how to create a listing presentation. So it's some marketing, some business stuff. Some just like, here's how to get reviews on Google. So we just try to feed them stuff to help grow their business. So what I love about, what I love about that is that's one more communication channel. It's one more content channel that you can continue to provide value to them. So when you're doing that weekly email, how often are you posting on, on, on each of those channels? <laughs> I, not as often as you want, right? It takes time. So yeah. long form to the public is about every other week. Okay. And then the agent one, honestly, I go in spurts. There is no schedule. It's just when I have time and. Or when something comes up or you have a conversation and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And some videos you can put on both channels. It just depends what it is. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But by creating that content and this is something that I, I, people really need to pick up on when you're creating that content. Now it gives you an excuse to send a weekly email and you can send something new every time. Hey, I created this video. I've always said this with the consumer direct stuff and it goes the same with the agents. They don't have to watch your content and you don't have to solve their problem. They just need to know that you're a passionate educator that likes to solve problems. And you're, they're reminded of that every single time. They may not watch the video, but they're like, oh, there's Rebecca solving another problem, <laughs> bringing up another issue, do it out there. What it, what, 
Where, where did, uh, so I, I don't know if I never noticed it or if this is something new, but where did the mortgage queen come from? <laughs> so my logo has a crown in it and I wear my faith on my sleeve. I am a Christian. It's out there. You'll see me do a short or a reel with a Bible verse. And it all goes back to the story of Esther because I believe we are here for a purpose. And my purpose is to help educate people through the home buying process. Um, so actually um, I see the little crown up on your, on well, your table. But look you. at my new flashy <laughs> wand. <laughs> Ooh, so, okay. That's a little gaudy, but <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to sprinkle it in here. I, I'm not, I think social media, you need to have some fun too. So I, I just ordered a crown from Amazon so I can put the crown on it. <laughs> I love that. And you've got to be yourself. And that's what I, that's what I love that you're, you're just transparent. You're a genuine person. And that's something that I picked up very early Thank is you. you just, you do, you just, you wear your heart on your sleeve. You're very transparent. I love that. I, I think you should, I think you should lead with your faith. You should lead with your values. You should lead with what's important and when your mission to help people and, and to empower people is, it's just such a fantastic, it's, I, I, Listen, I think it's the only way to survive in a market like this is you have to, and this is what I've been telling people for over a decade is like the mortgage industry is brutal. If there's not something that you, that drives you, that causes you to wake up other than a paycheck, you're going to burn out and you're going to leave this business because it's hard to make money in this business. It's good when there's good times and then when there's lean times, but if your mission is to help people you have that opportunity every single day. It doesn't always put commas in your bank account, but you have an opportunity to help people every single day. And especially in this market, right? As mortgage professionals, we think we have it tough. Consumers and real estate agents, like real estate agents work these little geographic areas. And if that geographic area isn't turning, it isn't bringing a lot of business, but consumers, my gosh, they're everything they know is clickbait headlines yeah. and, and it's never accurate. It's, it's always to one extreme or another hair on fire. Is this a good time? This is the worst time. This is the best time it's, but that's never the answer. The answer is always, it, it depends. It, exactly. Right. Exactly. And I much rather tell somebody let's wait, even though you don't know what's going to happen in the future. I just. I don't want them coming back and saying, well, you put me in this. Yeah. I, I never want my name tied to that. And yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit. So you've been doing the YouTube channels for about two years, two years for the consumer, 18 months for the real estate agents. You've been doing the lunch and learn since about 2017. Yep. Okay. And then you do short form social media as well, right? You're doing TikToks and shorts <laughs> and how long have you been doing that? And what are you doing on those? That's got to be over a year on the shorts. I was a little slower to get into TikTok and stuff. Just you hear all this bad stuff in the news about it, but um, I'm switching stuff over. I'm going to be more niche about my marketing and yep. do more first time home buyer content just because it doesn't mean I can't do the other stuff because I absolutely can. But if you get them then and keep marketing to them, you'll get everything else. And so I'm using up the content I already have recorded because I do batch content as much as I can. It's the best way to do it. Yep. So, so every, talk every, about that real quick. What does that mean to batch content? For so you? I know there's a lot of coaching programs that say on Mondays, you call these agents. I'm not doing it. Like I'm not calling agents on Mondays. They're dealing with stuff from the weekend. So I record my videos then. I do my social media content then. I have a private agent Facebook group. So I schedule everything out for the week on that. I get my email out to agents that day. Like That's kind of my marketing day of getting all of this stuff done. And how far out are you batching? Are you doing a week at a time, two weeks? How far ahead can you get? So I probably have a month worth of reels already done. Okay. And they're just sitting it because they're not time sensitive ones. Yeah. If it's a time sensitive one, we'll record that and get it out. But that way, if I want to go on vacation or I'm sick or whatever, or yeah. I just don't get to it today. It's okay. Cause I have a bunch done. And okay. So you've been doing that for a little bit over a year, you said, mm -hmm. 
on, yep. and, and which platforms are, are you publishing? I'm, I'm literally on everything. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, not on Twitter. <laughs> okay. I don't think not, it's a good thing. Not on the X. On the X. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. How... So let's say 2017 for the lunch and learns, like how has this changed your business since the slowdown? Because you're out there putting out information and educating and empowering. Like, what does your business look like as a result of all of this work? Like, where does your business come from? How do they reach out to you? How do you know where they come from? About 50% of my business is past clients, either coming back or referrals from past clients. Okay. And then 40% of it's real estate agents, which is definitely where I put the most of my time, even though it's a little bit less of a percentage. I think it just, it takes it to maintain the relationships. Yeah. And the last 10% is Google, YouTube referral, attorney, CPA. How many, how much of that real estate agent business do you attribute to, are you getting a lot of new real estate agents, do you think, from your content creation or... It doesn't even have to be an or there there's a, I guess part of my question is how important do you think your content and your communication is in maintaining and strengthening those relationships and keeping that business coming? Cause you're not calling them once a week, asking for business. You're just putting out value. You're putting out this communication. So you, you mentioned real quickly, you have a private Facebook group. So this batch of agents that's in your CRM you tried your best to get them into probably onto your webinars, your weekly webinars. You're sending them an email. You're trying to get them into the Facebook group, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It, it's so every time you have a communication, you're saying, Hey, join me in these other places. I am. Yeah. I are my, my agent Facebook group, obviously I'll do a post for the lunch and learn and that kind of stuff in there. But it's also a lot of topics of here's five good Chrome extensions that will help you, or here's a social media thing, or do you know, hashtags don't work on this anymore. Or just random stuff to keep them up with. It, it can, it could be a mortgage guideline too. You know how they change. So we post all sorts of stuff in there and that type of stuff, you can easily borrow it from somebody else, right? You find the people who are experts in those areas. And then I either recreate it or you can just copy and paste some of the content. Yeah. Yeah. How, like how much saturation do you think? Yeah. How much overlap did, are most of your agents on all of your pillars? Most of my agents are in my private group, but you know how it is getting people to actually respond. So yeah. it's getting better because I ask more questions and maybe what I'm posting is getting better. So they are being more active, but they're not as active as I would like them to be, but I know they're seeing it because you can see the insights and see that yeah. they're seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one of the things with content marketing that I learned very early is very few people will actually reach out and engage with you. And, and this is a little geeky, but if one person engages with you, that represents an exponentially larger number of people that are getting value from it, but they just aren't reaching out. They're not saying something, but statistically speaking, every time somebody does reach out to you, your actual audience is exponentially greater than that because the, it's just a fraction of the audience that's always going to engage. And that's what's so hard about content creation right? Because it, it takes a while to get any feedback loops. What, like all of the things that you've done, it takes a little while to build that up to know that it works. Like how long did it take you to know that it worked and how did you keep pushing yeah. on? How did you keep going until you started seeing it work? Because it takes time. The agent, they literally, like I'm, I will still cold call an agent. I'm not too good for that, but they will literally call me now. And when I set up the appointment, then they're like, well, can I bring a coworker with me? And I'm like, absolutely. Cause that's what you want. That's the yeah. easiest type of thing. But I think when they see that I'm not here just saying, can I count you to send me your next buyer? They see that I'm actually trying to help them. Yeah. That's, that's where it just helps solidify that relationship. When 
how long did it take until you started seeing that? Like that probably that didn't happen right away. No, it's probably been more the past two, three years that it's really taken off. And part of it is because there's one other thing I do that I think is awesome. <laughs> Pat myself yeah. on the back, right? You share. <laughs> Last summer I created an agent boot camp. And it was originally started for new agents, but I have had 20 year veterans go through it and tell me how much they've learned. So I created a four week class. It's two hours on Friday mornings for four weeks in a row. And I literally like week one is mortgage 101. So it is more mortgage intense. Uh, This is what an FHA loan is, how to read a cost sheet, that kind of stuff. And then week two is market basics. So it's, this is how the mortgage cycle works. And I literally pass a ball through, like I make them stand up and I'm like, you're the originator, you're the loan officer, you're the servicer. And I pass an event. It's an in-person event. Yep. And I pass that ball the whole way around all the way to wall street. And then wall street gives it back to the buyer. And I'm like, you just invested in your mortgage and your 401k and And they like the light bulbs go on. Wow. Um, Because nobody explains it to them. And I'm like, this is why when you have a septic issue and I tell you there's a rate lock extension, this is why, because you have to break it down that everybody's holding this hot potato with interest rates moving in the background. When did you start your boot camp? Last July was the first one I did. I've done five classes of it. I'm going to be doing another one in October. Wow. Okay. And how many people are, how many agents are you getting to show up? Are you fine? Have agents gone through it more than once? No, but they've asked for a 2.0 and I'm like, I don't know what else to teach you. <laughs> okay, so, so week two is the market. What's three and four? Um, three is all about actions that matter. So owning your day, coming up with what your, your actions that matter are and coming up with your schedule to do that, knowing your numbers. Okay. And week, week four is all about branding. So everything from marketing, social media, how to do video. I give them the links. Here's equipment to, to buy on a budget and the good stuff. So we just, we got, I give them certificates of graduation at the end. <laughs> how fun. Okay. So were you ever a teacher? Did you, in a, in a past life, did you? I wanted to be a teacher my entire life and I would play school like for hours growing up. That was my thing. And Wow. Yeah. So I've had, I think about 45 agents have gone through the class and, and graduated. And I will tell you when you spend that much time and it's not a sales pitch, it is right. literally education. They feel that bond with you. And, oh, like, yeah. and I, it's well, not it's boot, it's boot camp. It's, it doesn't sound easy. Two hours once a week. And, yeah. And your retention is pretty good. It, people I've picked far, up, they go to all four. I've picked up a lot of agents from it and it's, I actually charge them now. Like I used to do it for free and now I charge them $25 just to, not that I make, need to make money on it. It's to make them commit to be in there. Yeah. And get in the game. Yeah. And it helps pay for the coffee and donuts or whatever. right? And the, when I did it two times ago, it sold out in three days. Like, wow. (laughs) You saw, so and the first time you charged people, it sold out in three days. Yep. And what's the maximum that can go in the class? I technically, in my office, I can hold 18. I have a, a seminar room, but okay. that I cap at 12 just because you're there longer and I want more room. And In that smaller size group, I think, is a more intimate experience. Like they're, because they don't all know each other. So they get to exchange war stories and how yep. are you doing and Okay, so your next one is coming up in a, in October. I, I would imagine that those classes are even more valuable right now in this market than they've ever been because this is a time for grounding, right? This is a time for going back to basics, starting at reassessing, taking another look at your business from a different direction and just doing a little reset, right? A little mental reset and... and uh, Wow. This is so fascinating. You're so fun. You're, I love everything that you're doing and well, you just I, feel like you're having an absolute blast doing it. You've got to stick out. Like you say, we are marketers that do mortgages, right? Like yes. You have to be different. And this just follows my whole brand of education. Yeah. And I enjoy, and I, I revamp it every time. Like, 
it was a lot to build. It took me basically a month to build. The camp or everything? Yeah, the boot camp. And because yeah. I had to do all the handouts and everything. Topics, but now I just tweak it a little bit as I go through it, especially the marketing. That stuff is always changing. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that is so cool. And, and what area of the country are you in? I'm in central Pennsylvania, so below Harrisburg. Okay. And how many states are you licensed in? Just two, just Pennsylvania and Maryland. Okay. All right. So do do you, do you ever have people coming over from Maryland? Like like the Pennsylvania, you're pretty, uh, seems like you're pretty locally focused if you're doing these in-person events. Yeah. I, I haven't reached out to too many agents in Maryland. It's something I need to do. It's probably going to be on my agenda here fourth quarter. That seems random. It's not adjacent to Pennsylvania. Did you have a friend that moved? It is. There or? No, we, we border. Maryland and Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, border? Yeah. Okay. yeah. See, I don't know my geography. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of my agents that are in the town south of me are licensed in both states. So if Got they're it. going to service their clients, Got they it. better be able to. Okay. So it was to service. It was That's to why I did their it. clients. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Man, I love this. Let's wrap this up with, with <laughs> what kind of advice would you give to mortgage professionals today that are trying to figure out where their next deal is coming from? And I don't think there's a loan officer on the planet that doesn't say that they want to be a content creator, but like getting over that hurdle and doing it, like, I know you have peers that come up to you and say, Rebecca, how do you do it? What kind of advice would you, would you offer? Hire an intern, <laughs> number one. Like, I can't do all this myself. I hired a girl right out of college that did graphic design, and she's what took me to the next level. And she, I'm very proud of her. She started her own business now, so her hours with me have been cut. So I'm like, now what am I going to do? So I just hired a high school student to come in. Who better than to know the social media stuff than these young kids? So he's going to, he actually starts on Monday, and I'm super excited to help train him up and you never know, maybe he'll be a full-time employee for me. But we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about that, but I wanted to, you brought in somebody, you say intern, are they paid? Yes, are they paid I am paying them. Okay. But you're getting these young kids coming out of school. You're helping them build their resume and their portfolio. Clearly this person that, that is started their own business and you made that possible probably. So you yep. built up their confidence. So what do you have them, what do you have them doing? Let's, I, I thought we were wrapping up, but we're not. <laughs> we just opened up another, uh, another blossom here. So what is the, your content creation process look like? You're creating the video and then what happens? So originally my marketing girl was doing all my filming, all my editing. I record my shorts myself with a ring light and a clicker to, to start and stop. And then she just takes them and makes them look pretty. And she does all the social media posting for me for the most part. I do the agent group, but she does all of our public facing stuff. So okay. flyers and all that. But because we've built it all out now, everything's templated. Okay. It's another lunch and learn. You switch out the title and that. Yep. So it's a lot quicker now that I can use a high school intern to do that stuff. And they're a lot cheaper. So <laughs> what software, what soft technology platforms do you use for that? Are you putting it in a Google drive that notifies her or something like that? We just have Microsoft 360 and, okay. uh, and then we have Adobe Premiere Pro and of course Canva, cause you can do so much in Canva these days. Oh yeah. Yeah. But we're going more and more to Canva because if I have to change something, I don't know Adobe. So right. I'm, I've been pushing more that way. Okay. So you're creating the content, you're handing it off to somebody to make it pretty, repurpose it, and then publish it for all of the non-private real yeah. estate agent stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely love that. And, and like high school interns, guys, you can, this gentleman's leaving two periods early. The high school he's at is a block and a half from here. So he's going to walk over here three days a week. That's, it's great for him. And he's excited to do it. And that generation, they don't know a time without social media. Yeah. Like they weren't alive when social media wasn't a thing. 
So they grew up with all of this stuff and what better, there was actually, there was a Zillow report that was just released and they did a survey of 6,300 home buyers from like April to June and percent of all mortgage transactions were first time home buyers. Half of those first time home buyers were millennials, but a quarter of them were Gen Z. Yeah. So it's so important to connect with those demographics or, and bring them into your business, right? Bring them into your business, bring their perspectives, get to learn to know them and what they're thinking and how they're behaving. But that, that Zillow report was really interesting and really telling about how they use technology and, and how they engaged in, and how they consume content. Yeah. So. All right. So now let's go back. Let's go back to the video. So your best advice is to, this is a, I don't know if you were, you've been involved with Carl, but Carl's been, Carl White's been along in it forever is it's, he was your who, right? That's his big thing is it's don't do it yourself, find a who and find somebody else to do it. So this is what you're recommending. Go to the local high school. Now is are, is he getting credit for this in, the, in any way? Yes. He he's getting an internship credit. Yeah. Okay. So what was that process? What did you have to cut? Did you go to the school and say, I have these digital marketing needs. Is there anybody available? My son goes to a, a very small Christian school okay. and there's 200 kids K through 12. I, during summer camp, I walked over to the head person and said, Hey, I need an intern to do this. Do we have anybody? And he's like, yeah, I think we could come up with somebody. And that's what I did. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't. I was going to go out to the public schools if I couldn't find anybody, but I knew the likelihood of getting a child from my son's school would have the morals and background that I want. Yeah. So, I love that. So that was my first stop. Very now, could, Would it be better hiring a professional? Yeah, I'm sure all my stuff would be better doing that, but better we, is, don't, we don't have better new is Better is relative. You're publishing on a regular basis. That's the best thing that you can be doing. Yeah. Anybody can nitpick what does better mean. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just, yeah. And, and you know what? I think that's one of the biggest hurdles that people have is they're like, I want it to be this quality. And they never get it to that quality. So they never end up publishing anything. You can't be afraid to go out there and just, look like you don't know what you're doing for a little while until you figure out what you are doing, right? You just got to just do it. Man. Okay, Rebecca, unless you drop another bomb, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's so my, my advice is yes. every morning when I'm getting ready, I am educating myself. So whether I'm watching this Scott Shang podcast or another industry one, or if one on Canva, like you, I am always educating myself. Because like Google My Business just came out with putting your social media links in your Google profile. Now they're rolling it out slowly. It's not there for everybody yet. But I'm the one going to my social media girl telling her this. And now she should be coming to me with it, I feel. But you have to be putting, you have to be educating yourself constantly. You're not going to do everything at once. So you got to implement over time. Don't overload yourself. That's my other piece of advice. Because people see my stuff and they're like, oh, I'm going to do that. And I'm like, no, I did this over five years. It just take one thing and master it before you move on. And then learn something new every day. Yeah. So every morning you're doing that. Every morning, every morning. You're, you're, and oh, is that a 30 minute thing? Is that a, a one hour thing? Yeah, it depends what it is. Like I'm on Lender Launchpad, theirs are an hour. So sometimes I don't get to finish them or yeah. take two days, but. Love it. Absolutely love it. I look forward to continuing to see you in the circles that we're in. I, I love that you're out there doing what you do. I love why you're doing it. And I'm grateful that you came here to share all of that with everybody. I, I, I hope it motivates somebody to, to get out there and, and just start and start doing it. And that those high school interns, boy, that, <laughs> that's, that's a nugget. I hope people stuck around to, to get to that point. So Rebecca, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to talking to you again. And thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for having me.